Eltham Green School in South London. John Bailey is investigating how this school can reverse the decline of bright but unmotivated girls who are starting their GCSEs. He's already met some of the girls who teachers find challenging and undermining. And he's seen how some staff have adopted what appear to be defensive tactics such as being overly cool and avoiding confrontation. Come on, put it in there. Where's your book? Can you get your book out, Just get on. But today, he's about to meet a teacher who seems to have cracked the girl thing. I'll just give these out to you. Hannah Johns has been teaching for three years. She came to Eltham Green as a Teach First recruit and is now head of RE and psychology. She's about to start a lesson on social harmony with her year 10s. OK, we're going to be talking about what it, what it means to be part of a multi-faced society. By the end of the lesson, you are going to know what a multi-faced society is. OK, once you've written the aims down, if you can just put your pen down, and then as a class, uh, we're just going to go over the starter. The starter links back to last, le last lesson. We're just going to check your understanding of the key terms that we got from last lesson. OK, so when you do it, put your pen down and look up, and then I'll know that we're ready to go through the starter. Yes, yeah, sorry. So I always try and give them a starter that they can actually do whilst I'm sort of doing my manual stuff. And those students that turn a bit late, if they don't quite finish the starter, then, you know, then at least we're all ready to move on to the lesson together and students haven't just been sat there not doing anything. I'm going to read out the question, then I'm going to ask someone to tell me what they circled as the correct answer. So, tick these if you've got them right, cross them if you've got them wrong. Faye, women are bad drivers is an example of A, discrimination, B, prejudice, or C, racial prejudice. You think it's A, discrimination? No, prejudice. <laughs> OK, yeah, it's Charlie then. Can you explain why it's prejudice? Because it's judging, it's judging them before they know them. Brilliant. But... OK. Why is it not discrimination then? You're right. It's because they're, they're not taking it further as, um, like, telling them this thing, in it. They're not yeah. taking action about it. Brilliant. Just say that again? They're not taking action about it. Fantastic. Yeah, because discrimination is, is acting on your prejudice. Well done. Yeah. OK? Jess actually um, got moved into my class about four weeks ago because she wasn't getting on with her other teachers, so they said, C can you have her? And then, as Jess rightly said, discrimination is when you act on your prejudice, well done. And finally then, this is one we haven't done, but let's see if you know it. Billy, different ethnic groups living together peacefully is A, racial harmony, B, racial prejudice, or C, racism? B. Do you think a. it's racial prejudice? It's a. OK, Jess, why do you think it's A? Because wait, cause racial prejudice is um, when you're judging someone because of their colour before you know them, and racism is um, racial prejudice and discrimination, and racial harmony is living together. Well done. Excellent. If Jess can't do something, she plays up. Last year, she was in a more higher attaining group. Now, I think she is working much harder because she's in a group where she's probably one of the more able in the group. And she, you know, you saw her with that starter activity. I mean, she knew why that was racial harmony. She is much more so putting her hand up to share ideas, um, answering questions, which she didn't do last year. OK, thank you. Right. First part, you've got just some background information on how the United Kingdom became multi-faced society. You've got some key words missing and the words are at the bottom. You need to match the words in the spaces, tick them off as you go. When you've done that, there's two questions. First question relates to the text and the second question is about your own opinion. We are going to be discussing particularly question two and we're going to be relating it to the film, OK? If you look at the time now, I'm going to give you about five minutes to do this. OK, off you go. I'll come round and help anyone who's stuck. So, from the text, what does religious tolerance mean? OK, it's in the second paragraph, so pick up from the text. I really like this low voice stuff that you do, with because it, it really brings the level down, doesn't it? Yeah. And, and it keeps it down as well, so that's really nice and they like it. It's kind of intimate. What is religious tolerance? Yeah. OK, which is what? Try and put it in your own words. What does it mean? People from different... What? Ethnic backgrounds, able to live in their own, able to live in a country without discrimination. Brilliant. 
which has she's got she's very very low in confidence at the moment um, she massively underachieved in her sats uh, compared to the rest of the group in that she got level fours and the other people in my tutor group got sixes and sevens well, she's a bit below radar level well she came into the school on fours and fives in about five minutes, we're going to be watching a film that I made at the end of the last year that some of you might see yourself on. Uh, Chelsea, you're on it. Um, uh, I've got to run reports me as well. Um, I better on report after the academic review because, again, homework was, was a bit of an issue. But I gave her the choice when she came back after half term. I said, OK, you've had a really good couple of weeks. What do you want to do? Do you want to stay on report or, or do you want to go? She said, no, I'd like to stay on report. She said, because then I know I'm doing my homework and you're monitoring me. And she's coming, she should be coming back tonight after school, actually. She wants to come back on a Friday to do some science revision for her modules. So she's just going to come and sit. She just comes and sits in my room and gets out a science book and does some work then. Then if she needs any help, not that I'm very good at science, I'll give her help if I can, so. Can you just finish off now um, the sentence that you're on, please? Because uh, I'd like to move on. We go, we'll go through these answers now quickly as a class and then we'll move on. So just finish the sentence you're on. There's something here about girls and there's something about individual difference as well, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's knowing your children. Yeah. Um, can I have a volunteer to read? Does anyone like to read? Thank you, Jessica. If you can Not read that, out, read yeah, if you read through that and then actually read out the keywords, but pause after the keywords so everyone can give it a tick if they've got it right. OK? Off you go. <laughs> Many societies were mono. Yeah, faith. that's right, mono faith, yep. Yeah. Having one religion. Societies and, until the 20th uh, yeah, century. No. In some ways, Great Britain has been a multi faith society ever since the 16th century. Jess, any, anything to do with boys, she will get on to. Um, Doodly and I love Ricky. I think she showed some pictures at the end of boys she's got stuck in her planners. Just, and so, I think that's her friendship group. They're all absolutely besotted with boys, and it's all about boys and what they're doing. So Britain had to, leave the, had to have laws encouraging religious tolerance. Every, everyone was free to follow their own chosen religion without... <laughs> Oh, hey, discrimination. Thank you, Jess. Stop there, you're doing excellently so far. Tommy, can you just turn round, please, so you're facing the front? Well done, Jess. I call Jess Ginger sometimes, and I call her by her middle name, which is Barbara, and she hates it, but I, I can kind of do... <laughs> I, can kind of, I can kind of do that with her because I know her. Do we treat people of different races and religions fairly? Do we treat them equally? No. Hang on a sec. Let me let Danielle, let, let Danielle have a go first. Danielle, what do you think? And then I'll open it up. Yeah. You think we do? OK, why do you think we do? Jess, do you want to say your point then, cos you said no as yeah, well? Yeah, I don't think everyone gets treated equally. Illegal immigrants get treated better than us. They just get treated better than us. OK. Like, they, they come in and like, take all our jobs and then, like, all our houses and then we don't get nothing. Do you really think that's the case, though? Country? With Jess, I'll talk to her about her love life. Um, I know you love him, but can you, you know, do it on a piece of paper another time, rather than make it an issue? Because I know she's going to do it. If I said to her, do not doodle, you're naughty, she, she's going to do it anyway. So it's pointless just telling her off. So, you know, I just kind of joke about it with her. And when Stephen came on the film, I know she used to fancy him. So I was like, you used to fancy him, didn't you? And she was like, shut up, miss. Um, yeah, so it's kind of... I, I guess I talk to them a lot as much as I can. I, and they do kind of relate to me. Well, I think... I think when... Let, right, I think, <laughs> Jess, what you're doing, you're perfectly entitled to your opinion, but what you're doing is you're stereotyping all, all immigrants is the same thing. Now, there's people in this country that have lived here their whole lives and, and they don't... Let me finish, because uh, I'm letting, letting you talk, let me finish. No. They, they get benefits, they don't pay for the house, they get the government to pay for everything for them. And they've, they've been born in this country, they haven't come into this country, so they're actually no different to immigrants. So, you know, I take your point in what you're saying, that you feel immigrants taking a job, but you've got to be careful that in what you say you're not stereotyping yeah, I'm everyone about, I'm about the, the same foreigners thing. or the immigrants, whatever you want to call them. You know, they get houses and they get, like, jobs and, like, there's people, like, British Trumps. people that have been here for ages trying to do exactly the same things as these foreigners are getting, but they just come in the country and get it straight away. OK, so what I'll do is, if everyone's interested on that topic, I will sort out a lesson where we can have a proper discussion and a proper debate about these issues, OK? Because I just think now, with what we're trying to do this lesson... Could you face me, please? With what we're trying to do this lesson, with what's going on, it's probably not the best time to kind of go into a lot of depth. So what I'll do is I'll build that into this scheme of work and we'll set up a proper debate, a proper discussion when we've got facts and stuff, and we will look at it properly then. I thought, oh, no, she's going to try and argue her out of it. 
But then you listened to what she had to say and then said, let's have a fact-based lesson about it in the future. Genius. <laughs> I, 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 thought you were, I thought you were free in one bound of that. <laughs> Tommy, can I just remind you, you're on report. At the moment, you're on an S. If I have to tell you again, it will be an X, OK? I usually choose two students once a week and I make positive phone calls home on them. Um, and I do that with every class, particularly I find like in year eight and year nine, I only see students once a week and it has a massive impact. They come in and say, who are you going to call home? And I say, well, we've got everything to play for. And then I always tell them at the end of the lesson who I'm going to make the positive phone calls home to. Because you can hear parents' voices when you ring up and I say, oh, hi, it's Miss John's about to be, and they go, hello. And you can hear the nervousness in their voice. And then when you tell them, they're like, oh, thank you so much. Isn't that nice of you? And I go, I mean, equally, I will call home if kids aren't cutting it, but I just think, you know, parents, particularly with RE, because it is a stigmatised subject as well, to kind of call home and be positive and say they're doing really well. I also give letters as well every half term. I've got, like, um, positive letters for the person who's achieved highest on their assessment, the most improved person, and then two people that have worked really hard that half term. But I only do it at the end of a half term because I want it to be a big thing that these letters only go out once a half term and I give them to the students to take home. Where did you learn that? I made it up. Just I thought it'd be nice for them to do. So. Nick Roots. Though the girls respond well to Hannah, yeah, she has a problem start. with one of the boys. Tommy, come on. That boy is the bane of my life. Yeah. He's still that bad. Put that way. Tommy. Put it away. Okay, see that. Okay, you fill him in the keywords. He may be the bane of your life, but um, <laughs> if I may say so, you deal with him in a, in a textbook fashion because you, you've really got that idea of focusing on the target behaviour. Yeah. You don't go and tell him to shut up, you tell him what it is he meant to do. The group will be working, even in silence, and, and Tommy will shout out dickhead or something across the room, then it's kind of like, you know, you have to sort of deal with it for, for the sake of the rest of the group. Yes. Also, for the sake of the rest of the group, keeping them working how they are working as well, you know, rather than thinking, you know, saying this is acceptable. Hey, everyone, looking and listen then. Jess, this way, please. If anyone has any problems getting the sheets, come see me. Just want to say, you're really excellent this lesson. Listening and your contribution is very good. So, second row, off you go, please. Are people in the classroom gay? No. Right, why are you using that word then as a plus? So I was saying it to me. Were they? Yeah. So what you if, hear if, so, that? if someone calls you a nay, what is the correct thing to do? Call it back. Right, think about it again. What is the correct thing to do? Shouting that out isn't being respectful. It's also distracting and disturbing others. So again, it's gonna be an X. Okay. Thanks, miss. At the end of the day, what's the difference between teaching girls and teaching boys? To me, I, I think you, as much as I can, I know I don't always, but as much as I can, I, I try and have the same expectations for everyone. And I don't actually necessarily think... I think on a one-to-one, on a -one, the way I talk to them and things I say to them might be very different, but I think that isn't about their gender, that's about them. And I would say as much as possible, I teach like that rather than you're a boy, you're a girl. So your motto might be teach the child that's in front of you? Yeah. Brilliant. In the final programme, Bailey meets a teacher who commands the girls' respect. Right, where's everyone else? Where's Alex gone? Here they are, hon. And puts a radical idea to the deputy head. Okay, fine.